the greatest history in the city in itself. And uh, lo and behold, this bridge was supervised by the late Tim Coffey, who was a civil engineer, was one of these first projects to supervise the, the, the bridge over the Martin, if you want the lead softened on the Chogan, I'll hand over to you. Martin Costello, ladies and gentlemen, who is the manager of our Prima here in Borsley, has a very fascinating piece to share with you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Martin. Creamery was officially opened in 1908, and a couple of years earlier that the Creamery came here to Bursley. Uh, there was three people who attributed with the birth of Bursley Creamery, you could say. One was Eddie Finn of Main Street Bursley, Eddie had a pub in, in Torres, Michael Ryan of Knockanoor, and a newly arrived parish priest here, Father Patrick Ryan. Father Patrick Ryan had a great belief in the cooperative movement. and. He was a great man to get committees together and get people going and get, and, and get things organised. But he found the people who were kind of very difficult to get organised. Um, the biggest problem was where the query was going to be. And he got two years of internal fighting and winding and there was problems everywhere about it. Uh, one problem was there was a query located at Corabaha, which is the remains are still there, say so Sadler's house. Um, that query, the privately owned query by a company from Manchester. And there was also a creamery in Palace, which is known to Drumban, who have Drumban was set up before Bursley. And some of the people there didn't want to, um, farmers switching to a creamery in Bursley. There was also a creamery in Drum, which would few Bursley people went out to. Uh, so House Punkett in, in 1894 had founded the Irish Agricultural Organisation Society. And he got the idea from Farmers Co-op that was set up, the first co-op in the world was set up in Jutland in 1882. Uh, he had a secretary, R.A. Anderson, a very, a very able man. He came down to Bursley here to two public meetings. And he spoke at length to them about setting up the creamery. Then Michael Ryan of Nakanu walked back to Anderson and reported on themselves. And he said there was 36 suppliers to the south and, and east of the village of Bursley with an average of six cows. And they want the creamery in the village. Then again, at the, at the north side, there was 40 to 50 farmers who had a bigger average of cows but they are supplying Corabaha. They are willing to cooperate but won't come any nearer than a mile up the town. Father Ryan also noted that he had representations from wives and mothers who did not want their husbands and sons going through the village and being tempted by the many public houses. <laughs> there was also a very practical aspect to the location of the creamery. All meat was bought by S and Care. These were the old iron shot wheels. So the nearer we were to the creamery, it was, it was a big advantage. It was a very slow way of, of getting milk through the creamery. After a long drawn out affair, a site was purchased here uh, from a woman called uh, Nora McCall Cormac. It was previously a flour mill. It was adjacent to a farm known as Mill Mount, owned by James Stapleton. The IAOS came down and done a survey. Of the, of, and they actually, one of the interesting points that came out of it that the liquid milk supply needed for the non agricultural people of Borough City could be, could be supplied by 15 cows. Mm -hmm. By the middle of 1908, 60 people had signed up to share, as shareholders for a total share capital of £300. Um, I have a list of the names I can show to anyone above in, in the, um, those original 60 above in the community centre afterwards. It was Ryan's, Farrell's, Manor's, Shea's, Kindy's, Steiner's, Coffee's, Delaney's, Hearty's, the names are all still around. The founding committee was James Finn, Bartholomew Finn, William Carroll, Matthew Connolly, Lawrence O'Brien, Richard Burke, and Martin Naffin. Eddie Finn was appointed secretary. An agreement was signed with Paddis Creamery, which allowed six farmers to leave and bring their milk here to Paris to leave. At the first ordinary uh, business meeting of the co-op, a committee of 17 was appointed. Father Patrick Ryan was chairman and president. The first manager was Timothy Ryan Senior, whose brother Willie was manager of Palace Creamery. The total number of shareholders reached 92 after one year, and the intake reached 36,000 gallons. The creamery began to work with farmers to improve their herds on a cow, a cow testing program, and this was established in 1913, the first in the country. The 11 members. 
The creamy then went from strength to strength. If I need 24, Boris Lee was churning milk for two independent creamies. Which, uh, one was Claude at Green Anne Cross, and the other was Kilveris at Drum. In 1930, Boris Lee purchased the creamery at Florida, and also at that stage, the owned the Corbat Creamery. They were also taking in cream from Temple Gary, got to Gary, and um, the place outside Money Gall. It's done another sort. This said that uh, there was now 800 suppliers supplying Boris Lee. This is 1929. And there was 200 of them sending milk direct to Boris Lee. Total milk intake for 1929 was 428,300 gallons. And the average price paid was 6.4 pence per gallon. The society had accumulated profits of £5,825 and had no debt. The society had done a small business in, in, in uh, agricultural goods, seed corn, sprays and mules amounting to £622. It had a mill and grinds corn for its own members. It uh, supplied electricity to the town, but it had been superseded by the Shannon scheme. The creamery gas engine referred to was a, a, gas, a, a gas engine that they had purchased here for supplying the um, light. Paraffin was the usual one used for that, but paraffin gave off a vapour which, which often soured the, um, the actual bottle. So it was actually a very good invention to, to bring a gas around the place. Uh, the gas engine was operated by Jack Mott, who was a local postman, and he later joined the ASB. The generator was obviously brought by Tim Ryan and taken up to that car, and some of you would have seen it down through the years. It was drove with water power from a dam that Tim built across the Florida River. Uh, Tim Dairy Creamery amalgamated with Borussia in 1934. Uh, it continued on and then you came to the Second World War and there was no, no coal to be got. Truff was brought down from Cumber and from Tim de Tui. And the 50s then you had big changes in agriculture. We, and short hardened cow, which was a dual purpose cow if it was for milk and beef, was replaced by the British Friesian. And we've seen in the mural up here some beautiful British Friesians. But they weren't here before 1950. Um, the first reason to come into Corbea came to Rafa Rhines. And my, my own father often told me that um, they were down in Corbea waiting for the, the, this, this black and white cow to be dropped off at Corbea Cross. And there was 130 farmers waiting there for her to come. And she was walked up as far as Rafa's farm. And off. after the general consensus one that her skin was too light and she'd be dead before the winter was out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tillage declined in very much in the area, and, and more, more animals, more cows were got into, and more, more cattle. Uh, you can imagine, it, prior to 1960, there was no um, mechanical milk coolers. No, milk was often left in churns in the rivers, and any way you thought it could. But very often, very bad milk came in to the creamery here. Um, Amanda, I worked with here for a few uh, Late, I worked in a few years. Um, Tom Ryan, that's only you would have known Tom, he had, a, he had some grass fakes about, about sour milk in his place. <laughs> um, a very practical aspect was lovely palm trees that you see down there in front of Sinead and Neve's house. And there was, they were actually sown to keep the, the sun off the turns on the way into the cradle. We went in that road down by Sinead's house and came back out this one. Um, Golden Vale butter was the original butter that was marketed by Boris Lee. But then uh, Golden Vale Creamery started in Cork, and they actually issued a, a warning to Boris Lee here that they'd have to change their name. Boris Lee didn't have the financial resources to take him on, so they changed to Golden Valley Butter. And uh, Boris Lee was the first creamery in temporary to purchase the automatic butter churn, the Buttermatic, which was purchased from IAWS in Dublin in 1962 for £15,000, not that money in that time. And in 1963, Bursley diversified with his own milling plant, producing meal and cat for cattle and pigs. He'd also built a grand dryer and store. In 1969, Bursley won the Reed Cup for the best butter in Ireland. It was a marvellous achievement for a small creamery. Uh, interesting for that, when we joined Tipperary in 1973, after Tipperary won it three times after. Once they got milk from Boris, they were at the winner. At this stage, the intake had reached 2 million gallons from 410 suppliers. It was felt at that time by the board that amalgamation was needed, and in 1971, we joined with Tipperary uh, Town. The automatic was transferred down in 1973. Uh, 1990 was another great year. 
when one of our local suppliers, Michael Gray, from the risk, is here with us today. Our history is now entwined with the Braley Co-op. We're seeing great changes. We started out with cows being milked by hand, and now not 10 minutes away down in that mile, there's cows going in to be milked by a robot. Our better with staff south life here on the farms of our city and, and uh, surrounding parishes ends up, ends up all over the world under the Kerrygore brand. And that's a very short version of the history of our city creamery. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Thank you indeed, Malcolm. Are we okay with the amplifier, folks? Can you hear? Okay, reasonably okay. Now, thanks again, Martin, for that magnificent uh, resume.